I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the church in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8. Gospel of Luke. We're going to read at the beginning of verse 46, where the Lord says the following. But Jesus said, somebody touched me. Oh, the church may be seated. I'm going to praise the name of the Lord. The song 2, 260. If we're not the love that God revealed to me, for me, I would not be here. singing. The man praising the name of the Lord.
Brethren, the Bible says that when Jesus came back, the multitude, I will repeat, the multitude received him because they were waiting for him. And in, in many moments of the ministry, such a short ministry of the Lord Jesus, the Bible describes many times that together with Jesus there was a great multitude. And the multitude that was with Jesus, it was with Jesus because many that there were there when they went there as curious, they wanted to see if Jesus was going to perform another one of his miracles, perform another one of his wonders, one of his, another one of his prodigies, or perform a cure or a deliverance. But among the multitude, there was always there were always those that were there in need with a desire of a blessing. And that's what happened in this opportunity. When the Lord Jesus is received by the multitude, there was a man. According to the word, he's, he was called Jairo. Who was Jairo? The Bible said that Jairus was a prince of a synagogue. Which, what was a synagogue? A synagogue was a place where the Jews went to read uh, the laws of Moses, to read the, the Word of God. Jairus was a prince of a place like that. He was a uh, well-educated man, religious and important man in the society that he was living in. But now he goes towards Jesus because he had heard about that Jesus was a, pro a powerful prophet, uh, prophet in works. He heard many times Jesus preaching in the synagogue. Jesus performed wonderful things. And now he goes toward Jesus, not as a prince of the synagogue, not as an important man of uh, society, uh, the society that was living in, he was living in. But Jairus goes towards Jesus as a needy man, as a man that needed a blessing, that wanted a blessing. And it is interesting that it was not only for him, but it was for someone, uh, a member of his family. And the Bible says that he goes toward Jesus and prostrate in his presence and does one thing. He pleased that Jesus entered into his house. Why that? Why is that? Because in his house, Jairus had left his daughter, his only daughter. Whoever here is a father or a mother knows what it is having a son or a daughter. Even more, a single son or daughter. And he had left his only daughter, almost 12 years old, and she was she was close to death. For sure, he sought all his own resources possible, because it's, it's normal for men to do this. And now he seeks the Lord Jesus and placed he he places in Jesus his last hope. And the question that I want to ask the whole church, did he go to the one that can do all things? Didn't he? He makes a supplication and asks Jesus, go to my house. And now the question I ask, Jesus could have answered him? Or he may not have answered. But the prophet speaks that his hands are not uh, closed not to bless, but they are stretched to bless. Like the, 
the hands of God are here to bless us. His ears are not closed, but they are paying attention to your to our prayers. And in Jesus, it is biblical. It is in the Word. It is in the Gospels. Every time that someone comes close to Him with their heart, with the desire of a blessing, He never. Jesus uh, didn't bless that person. Now Jesus placed himself at the disposal of that man to go to his house. And now in this whole multitude, there was one that was there because he had a necessity. But were there more people that had needs? You all know that there were. But as Jesus was going towards the house of Jairus, he, did he go alone? No. The multitude kept going with him. The multitude followed him. Like if they were saying, hey, let, let us see it. If he is going to do, perform one of, another one of his miracles. Let us see, to testify, to see if he is going to, to work uh, a miracle in the life of the daughter of the, the king of the, the priest of synagogue. So and the Bible said that as he was going, the multitude was squeezing him. And uh, the Bible now registers an, another person that had a different heart. I want to stop here just to take advantage of this expression. Are you here tonight with a different heart? What is a different heart? A heart with the desire that Jesus will visit you that He will bless you, that Jesus will bring joy to your life, that He may renew you. And the Bible also said that there was a woman there, and she had a need. She had flow of blood for 12 years, and she had spent all her money in doctors, and none of them uh, brought a cure to her. A man with a need, and now a woman with another necessity. And they both now, they had only one hope. Their hope is was Jesus. And want to give us a word, to leave us a word to the church, is that you will, your brother will realize in the next few instances that both of them were blessed. But each one is going to leave us a teaching a wonderful teaching of how to have the blessing of God in our lives. Each one of them in their posture will teach us how we can see the miracle of Jesus being performed in my life and your life. You want to say? The Bible tells us that uh, somebody coming from behind Jesus, this woman touched the rim of his ropes and and at that instant the flow of the blood in her stopped so the first thing that we identify here is that were were the conditions for her to be blessed the first thing was a purpose she placed in her heart the purpose to go towards Jesus a brethren our lives in every aspect, even in the presence of God, is made out of purpose. Today, you, I, every one of us, place a purpose in our hearts. Today, I'm going to go to the house of the Lord. Glory to God for this. That was the first condition to receive a blessing. Put a purpose in your heart. Seek the Lord, Jesus. And she did that. Second thing, effort. What is, how is that? This woman, for 12 years, she was debilitated, she was ill. She sees the multitude. It was difficult to overcome the multitude. It was a large crowd, and between her and Jesus, and between her and a blessing, between her and a miracle, between the sin that was upon her life, and the joy that Jesus had to give her, but she, did she care about the crowd, my brethren? Was it an obstacle for her? 
No. She made an effort. I can imagine she's going through the multitude and everything because she wanted one thing. She wanted her blessing. My brethren, you want your blessing? You, have you placed a purpose in your life? You want a blessing? Have you made an effort to be uh, overcoming the obstacles, to touch Jesus? So the third fundamental thing for, for this woman to receive blessing was faith. If I only touch on the rims of his robes, he doesn't even have to speak with me. He doesn't have to stretch his hand. I just need to touch. That's faith. And the word says, do you have faith? And the, the question I asked to the church in Pompano, do you have faith? Do you have purpose? Do you make an effort? Do you have faith? The blessing of God. In the name of Jesus, you will become upon you and your house. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The word tells us that then Jesus said, Who has touched me? And everybody denying, Peter told him, Master, the multitude squeezes you and oppresses you. And you, now you're asking, who, is touched, who has touched me? Now I learned from a friend, a pastor, a friend of mine. He made the following remark. The group of assistants that was with Jesus at that day didn't have the same sensibility as Jesus. Lord, the multitude is squeezing you. The multitude oppresses you. And now you asking, has anybody touched me? They didn't have the same sensibility. And Jesus said, yes, somebody touched me. Do you know why? And the answer was, because virtue came from me. Because virtue came out of, of me to cure. And this woman that could no longer hide, she came to his presence shaking and afraid and she said to the to everyone that she had been cured of her even blessed be the name of the lord and jesus told her and she can the first person of these two people that we are talking about the first this that went uh inside of this crowd that went to speak with jesus He's, he said, Jesus uh, told her that your faith cured you and brought joy to your life. And now you're going to receive another thing. Go in peace because you have received, you have received a blessing. Bless me in the name of the Lord. So now we're going to the second person. When Jesus does those things, the word tells us that as he was speaking, a messenger came. Now from the house of the prince of the synagogue, Jairus, a message came. It's redundant, but I want to say a message from someone can be a good or a bad message, right? Uh, the word can be good or it can be bad. And the Bible tells us that as he was still talking, came from the house of the prince of the synagogue, somebody saying, your daughter, Jairus, she is dead. Like if someone was saying, there's no way, there's no more hope, I'm going to stop here. Why bring Jesus to your house? Don't bother the master. She's already dead. Now, I want to stop a little bit to say something. For Jesus, everything there is a for, there is a way out for everything. Everything is possible for Jesus, because it's not me. It's the Bible that says it. He is the Lord of the impossible. What I cannot do, my, my capacity is is extinguishes our power to give a solution to our problem. 
That's when the power of Jesus begins. I cannot do. You cannot do. But He is the Lord of the impossible. Do not bother the Master. At that moment, Jairus had a choice to make. He could have heard that word and say, everything is over and that's it. She's dead. And Jesus, when he heard all things, all these things, he answered saying, two things to Jairus. First, do not be afraid and believe alone. And if you, my brother, you desire blessing, and for you, your problem, you don't see a solution. You're going through a difficult situation. The word of the Lord is the following for you. Do not be afraid. The second is trust alone, because the word says that whoever believes you see the glory. It's not the glory of man, but it's a glory called the glory of God. Hallelujah. And Jairus now had another option, believe or not. Another option. He could be afraid or not. And the word tells us, my brethren, that as he entered into the, his house, Jairus, nobody allowed him. He did not allow anybody else to enter in but Peter, James, and John, and the father of the daughter. And when they got there, according to the Bible, everybody was crying. Because those that were close to the house of the prince, they could only do that, cry. Be sad. That's what man can do. That's the only thing that man can do. But now they was entering into the house of Jairus, the one that could change all things. And we have already sang a song that says, Jesus changed my life every day when I placed a purpose in my heart, when I make an effort to be in the presence of the Lord, when I have faith, He changed all things because He has this power to transform. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So as He entered there, He didn't allow anybody to enter but the disciples, the father and the mother. And I understand that. The door was closed. My brethren, it's another thing that you, we need to understand. There are many moments in, the, in our lives in which uh, our intimacy with the Lord is to enter and close the door. It is God and us. It's God and the Lord and God and us. And the Word uh, come, uh, finishes telling. And Jesus said, do not cry because she's not dead. She's just asleep. She's just asleep. And I came here to awaken her from her sleep. I came to give her life. And at that night, the Lord is saying that He is here in this place to give a blessing, to give me a blessing. Because the one who blesses is His, is Him. He's the one who blesses. He wants to give life. Once who cures, the one who transforms is God. The one who brings peace to our hearts is Him. Who does a miracle and who does the impossible is Him. And the one that could do all those things was there at that day. And as He, when He took the hand of the daughter, He said, Get up, child. And the life came back to her, and now Jesus then gives the daughter to the parents and said, give her something to eat. And what happened? And the parents were amazed. The parents were amazed. God brought us here tonight. I don't know your heart. And the Bible says the following. He knows the secret of my heart. Speak to Jesus. What is your need. There is a song that is very old that says, Tell Jesus where is your pain. Tell him. Because he is the one who blessed this woman. He is the one who blessed this 
Father, He can also bless you tonight. What can you do? You need to open up your heart. Have faith. You need to believe. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us sing a song.
like to invite the church to stand up. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, I praise your name. I glorify you for being once again in your house. We exalt your holy name because it is good to our hearts. It brings joy to our soul because that's what we have been called for, to adore you, to exalt you. Lord, we praise you for our great salvation because you died on the cross of Calvary for love, for our lives. We praise you, God, for this salvation that is so great for everything that you have done and given to our lives, for the great deliverances, for the great victories that you have gained in us. Lord, we praise you because it's wonderful to be in the dependence of the Lord, in the dependence of a God that can do all things. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, receive our worship, our adoration, this service that was offered to you and that you may turn into blessings to each one of us, to our homes, Lord, even to those that have not been able to be here in the service tonight, that, but you may be able to reach them, blessing each one for the love of your name, for the honor of your name. We may speak, continue to speak to our hearts, that we may be sensitive to your voice, that we may always be beneath your blessing hands. Take us home in peace and pray that we ask in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations, and the spiritual gifts be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We have a couple of announcements. Next week we're going to have a seminar in the region of Newark in New Jersey. And I'm going to ask you, brethren, to be praying for this event, the church there, church there. A few are going to go on, to be going on a trip, and some with car, or some with plane. So God may be bless each one in the trajectory. So the seminar may be a blessing to each one that participates. So throughout this week, please remember this seminar that is going to happen next Sunday. So tomorrow morning there is we're going to have a, a special service. It's going to start at 10 o'clock in the morning. So you'll be present and inform the groups. Usually our service is at, at 10.30, but tomorrow is going to be at 10. We're going to bring a word about the ministry. Today, this is the month of the pastors, the fam so we're going to bring a message about ministry, the function of the pastor, the function of those that help the pastor, so that we may understand and know why we pray to the pastors. If uh, if you need a, a prayer assistant, we are here at your disposal to pray for you. And on Monday, we have a meeting with the workers in the church, the men and the workers, on Monday at 8 o'clock p.m. Peace of the Lord to everyone.